Hi STEM scholars, I'm Dr. Kelly Christopher and today I'm excited to talk to you about two topics. We'll be talking about capillary action and chromatography. We're going to start today with capillary action because that is the chemistry principle that we can use to do the other activities. Now I'm going to start with a demonstration. A capillary is just a small tube. In biology, capillaries are related to blood vessels, but in chemistry and what we're gonna be doing today, we're just using a capillary to be a small tube with a small diameter. And diameter is just the measurement of the size of a circle. So when you have a circle, the diameter is the measurement across the circle as the length goes through the center of the circle. This instrument can be used to describe capillary action a little bit better. There are three different tubes and they each have a different diameter. The largest one on this side to the smallest diameter right here. I'm gonna add some water and this water has been colored blue. It's just regular water, but I colored it blue so that you could see a little bit better. And we're going to add, I'm gonna pour the, or put some of this water in this reservoir right here. As you can see, and it might be a little bit difficult to see, but every one of these tubes, the water went up a different level. And you can see that on the narrowest tube, the water went up higher than the other tubes. In fact, with capillary action, the narrower the tube, the more capillary action you'll see. Water molecules are very attracted to each other, but they are even more attracted to the container that they are in. When we look closely, these molecules defy gravity and are sort of climbing the walls of the tube. Capillary action is how plants take up water. If you've ever seen the inside of a tree or plant, you will see fibrous tubes that are very small, and that's how water gets from the soil to the plant. So for us to take a look at a plant and see how capillary action works, we're going to do another activity. All you need is a cup and you're gonna put some water in it. You can decide what color that you want to use. I think I will use red this time around. You're gonna put some red food coloring into the water. And then you're going to get some celery, okay? Let me see which one do I want. And I'm going to just cut the very bottom of this celery off just so that there's a flat opening. You can almost see the little capillaries, the little tubes at the bottom of the celery. Now, you will have to let this sit quite a long time. In fact, overnight is best. So I have a couple that I did last night and we're gonna see if we can uh, notice any of the colors. I did two different colors, so we'll see if we can find them inside the celery. I'm gonna cut this one first to see if we can find those capillaries. Mm, that's, that one was blue and it really didn't show up very dark. So let me try this red one. Okay. That one didn't show up very well either, but you can see it a little bit. If you look closely, you can see a slight red dye that shows the capillaries as they were bringing up the stalk of the tube. And depending on the dye, it might come out a little bit darker. This side, there's a slight, you might be able to see the color a little bit more clearly. This is the blue one. But the longer you let them sit, the darker and the more uh, water will come up the celery through those capillaries. Now for the next activity, you're going to need five cups, food coloring in the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. You'll need some paper towel and some water as well. We're gonna start by simply putting five cups out and we're going to put water in every other cup. Fill it, oh I don't know, maybe about halfway. 
with water. And then you are going to add food coloring. I'm gonna start red on one side, just a few drops in each one. Blue on the other far side. And yellow in the middle. The next thing you're going to do is you're gonna take paper towel and you're gonna fold it into strips. You'll need about four rectangular pieces of paper towel for this. I like to make the strips about an inch wide. And all I'm going to do is kind of fold it over and I'm going to put it from one side uh, in the food coloring and the other side in the empty cup. And then I'm just gonna repeat that process so that there is paper towel between all of the cups. Now paper towel is made out of plant fibers. And remember how I was saying that plant fibers have little bitty tubes and capillaries? And that's why paper towel works uh, and can soak up water. You can already see the water starting to climb up the paper towel as it uses capillary action to move. Now for this activity, you really need to give it some time, several hours. So I did this last night so that you could take a look at what the result will be when you're finished. Okay. So the, for the one that I set out last night, you can see that the red, uh, the water from the red cup went to the middle cup and the yellow and the red made orange. The blue cup and the yellow cup filtered into this cup and you got a green color. So you end up with a rainbow of colors, but again, this is gonna take some time. You'll wanna leave it overnight. For our final activity today, we're gonna to be taking a closer look at the pigments that are in ink. For this activity, we are going to use a plate. We're gonna use special chromatography filter paper in this activity, but at the end, I'll show you some alternates that you can use. You'll need a dropper, some water, and a marker, multiple markers uh, to get you started. Now chromatography comes from the root word chroma. Chroma means color. So in this activity, what we're really doing is we are filtering color. Now it's good to start with a black marker and it's important that the marker is water soluble. Do not use a permanent marker for this activity or it will not work. I'm gonna take my filter paper and just draw a circle on the filter paper like this. And then I'm going to take the filter paper and put it on a plate. Using a dropper, I'm gonna get some water and put, the wa drop, put drops of water inside the circle. Now this activity takes time as well, and you're going to need to put multiple drops of water in the center, but you can see that the filter paper is starting to filter that ink, and the water is moving the ink with it. Now it's not clear quite yet on here, but you might start to see that there are multiple colors that are in black ink. Some pigments are made up of multiple different colors. So in black, you might see green, you might see red. Uh, in fact, I did one last night just so we could get a better look because this might take a while. All right, so last night I did this activity and we used black marker, but as you can see, the black pigment is actually made up of a lot of other pigments. I see red, green, yellow, some blue, so what you're seeing on the filter paper, uh, or what you see in the end, or when you first start the filter paper, the black is actually a combination of lots of other colors. And using the filter paper, the water uh, will separate those colors. 
Well, why does it separate the colors? Well, it's because the different pigments have different densities. We've talked about density in another video. So the uh, colors that are more dense are harder to pull and the water will not pull them as far as the colors that are less dense. They can pull those a little bit further. Now you don't have to stop with just black. You could um, do this activity, try a few other colors. And as I mentioned before, you don't have to use special chromatography filter paper. Even if you just get a regular coffee filter, you can do this activity, it'll turn out the same way. Just get the coffee filter, flatten it out, color on it, and put it on a piece of paper. Put your drops of water in the middle and watch what happens. Well, that's all for today. I hope you learned something and I hope you have fun. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.